Hey everyone, today let's turn a 154 horsepower dirt cheap hybrid motor into a 290 horsepower monster. How about that? Does that sound good to you guys? I know it sounds good to me. So we're on the road again. Yep, we're off to the junkyard and I'm going to pick up a 2AR FXE motor because unlike the 1AR that I did in the uh, well, two videos ago, uh, the 2AR FXE is all over the place and it's cheap as heck. So it's probably a better base to start with and it solves some of the problem that we had with the uh, previous performance version, which is namely the lack of compression. So, of course, we could have thrown some pi thrown some pistons in there and that would have helped the situation, but I'm aware that a lot of you guys are not not really interested in diving deep into motors, so let's see what we can do about making it simple for everybody while still keeping the cost down. So here's the thing, the uh, 2AR FXE, it's a 12 and a half to one compression ratio engine, and the intake stroke on it is intended to be shorter, but because of physics and the fact that this is done in a motor with a normal crank, the way that Toyota gets a shorter intake stroke is actually by having a much longer intake valve opening. And what that means is we get a 260 degree cam in the 2AR FXE. Now, through some pretty good luck, the 2AR FXE, in fact, the entire AR family can actually fit the intake cam into the exhaust position. Um, the cams are different. The exhaust cam is actually just a little bit longer, so it can't fit in the intake position, but the opposite is not true. So that means just by acquiring this 2AR FXE, as well as another intake cam from the exact same motor, we can put together a motor that's got 12 and a half to one compression ratio and 260 degree cams on the intake and the exhaust. Um, the valve lift on this motor is also pretty nice. It's, it's only a tiny bit smaller, uh, 0.4 millimeters smaller on the hybrid version instead of the regular version. So I don't think that's gonna make a massive difference given the uh, very oversized nature of these valves. And uh, yeah, let's get to it. All right, well, we got it unloaded. Um, yeah, a couple good things, a couple bad things. Um, I do wanna show you guys this. So right here, uh, this is the EGR. And if you look in there, this is one of the beauties about hybrids. They don't run at idle, and idle is where your EGR really gets all coked up. So, you know, there shouldn't be much in the intake. Actually, we can help you look. Yeah. Yeah, it might not be the best lighting, but you can see. Yeah, this, this thing had EGR, but yeah, it's not bad. Not bad at all. And let's take a look at the other side here. No, that's not good. It might not be a problem, but it might be a problem. We'll see. So let's bring you in and uh, strip this thing down. out the filter element the this is just the the epoxy from the ends there we're looking for looking for glitter I am not seeing I think we're good guys and actually I thought about that oil up there for a little bit um, I bet you this thing sat in a less than normal position for a little bit, probably in the accident. Because it's not, it doesn't have an extra build up there. It looks like it just got oiled down, like maybe the car was pointing sideways in a ditch. Um, like if it was on its, uh, yeah, if it was on its left side by quite a bit, then the oil could make it up and 
Yeah, I think we're just gonna send it. Let's take a look at the valve train next. Yeah, and you can see on the injectors, signs of EGR. Um, I accidentally ripped the cap off. Either way, nothing wrong here. And I do find this interesting, by the way. Toyota went to this uh, stamped sheet metal and notice they got rid of the pressure damper. This whole assembly, I bet, acts as a pressure damper. Probably part of this shape here so that it can flex in and out. I don't know, pretty ingenious if you ask me. Interesting. They also changed the uh, spray bar to plastic. That's normally metal. Not that it matters because this is a single VVTi, but it's interesting. And now the moment of truth. This is supposed to be a low mile motor and uh, you know what? I think it is. Yeah, take a look. I'm not seeing any oil varnish. It definitely had regular oil changes, even if it is at low miles. It's just the outside looks like, I don't know, either got driven in the winter a fair bit or the owner lived on a dirt road or something, but this looks fantastic. And yeah, there's that uh, fixed exhaust cam, by the way. You can see those big fat Atkinson lobes. Oh, there you go. That one's a little bit easier to see. And those itty bitty little exhaust lobes. But. It's fine. We're going to fix that exhaust. All right. I'm not going to take the camshaft out yet. Let's move to the timing cover. Yeah, and check this out. There's no wear on that pulley at all because there's no belt on a hybrid motor. Nothing of note here. Again, very little varnish. I think we got a good engine. Yeah, feeling pretty good about that. All right. Let's get the pan off. And by the way, if you're not taking the balance shafts out, you can stop right here because everything you need is up here and you'll need to retime the motor afterwards. So, and technically, I think you can retime it with the timing cover on, but don't. We're going to be doing enough monkeying around here that it's. It's not worth doing it that way. All right. And this is officially out of time. All right, and let's take a look in here. The big thing I notice is, see those oil squirters down there? Looks like the 2AR FXE still has them all. So we're good there. Um, other than taking the uh, cam carrier off, this is, this is as far down as we need to go. So I think I'm pretty happy with this motor. It doesn't look like it's packed up with a bunch of varnish or anything. Yeah. All right, let's get rid of those balance shafts. So step one, we've got our oil feed right here. And once we take the balance shafts out, we don't want the oil pressure to drop on the motor, so I found, I'll just keep these. This is a tapered roller bearing that ends up uh, fitting pretty close. There you go. So that takes care of our oil, and now we just need to figure out how to take this apart, and it actually looks like it's just going to be these. There you go. And that's what we're taking out. All right, and this looks like it's got some bearings, which makes sense because this thing's spinning seriously fast. So make sure you take those out so they don't fall in. So actually, this, oh, you know what? I guess it makes sense that there's some, uh, this is the stuff that basically, as the motor was running, because this is pointing down, right? So once the oil and the grit makes it in here, it can't really make it out. So, yeah, I mean, that looks like a reasonable amount of schmoo. Yeah, all right. I'm happy with that. I'm gonna clean it up though. 
actually not only am I going to clean it out but I'm going to go drill some holes in it so that this thing drains properly and doesn't accumulate this stuff. All right so I cleaned this all up and I made some modifications put a hole here hole here and a hole here and this is optional right it's it's just making it so that these areas drain. Um, next we want to put this back on but it's going to be easier to clean this gasket without this in the way so let's do that first. All right <clears throat> now let's put this back on. All right 24 foot pounds on the small ones and 32 foot pounds on these ones. Okay, these are seven foot pounds. Click. Click. Confirm your O ring is still there. And then these are technically six and a half foot pounds. Why the difference between six and a half and seven uh, beats me. I'm just going to leave my uh, torque wrench calibrated at the seven foot pounds that I had it before and torque them down. beard back I'm gonna clean the gasket on the oil pan. All right, we got a clean pan and I hadn't noticed this before but check that out they've actually notched out the bottom <laughs> of where the oil plug goes so that it drains just a little bit more oil. Neat! All right and more seven foot pounds. It would appear that my torque wrench is miscalibrated. Well, that's a pain in the butt. That's all right. It's honestly not that hard to fix. And this I'll fix off camera. Um, I'll save the time for you guys watching it, but I'm just going to use a really small left-handed drill bit. Actually, you know what? No, the hole goes all the way through. I'm just going to use a right-handed drill bit and uh, It'll probably just drive it right through there. As soon as the drill bit catches, it'll screw it out. And I'll put another one, another fastener in there. All right, now we want to remove the timing assembly. So, and by the way, the pistons right now, you may have not noticed, but I checked when it was upside down, the pistons are about midway right now. So no matter what happens to the valves, the valves can't strike a piston. And if we clean that up, yeah, there's really, I mean, there's, there's wear. You can tell that this engine ran, but nothing significant. All right. And we just take, take the chain off now. A little bit of built, built up tension there. Now you don't actually have to take these off. I'm just going to take them off so that it, helps me demonstrate what I'm about to do. There you go. All right, now there's no valves getting in the way of rotating this assembly. All right, now let's take the caps off. All right, now what we're gonna do we are going to take this camshaft out and then the idea is we grab another one of these. So this is the same as this. So we've got two intake cams in here. Now the junkyard that sold me this did not 
do the nice thing and release the cam. So I'm actually going to have to bolt it in so I can pressurize it and release it. But yeah, I mean, there it is. That's, that's the goal here, except the only issue is, well, here, let me zoom you guys out. All right. Well, what we've got here at this point is th this is our bare minimum configuration, except you got to put the fixed cam gear here. With the fixed cam gear here and things set to the right position here, you're either going to get a motor that's got um, a lot of torque or a lot of peak horsepower. And I think the peak horsepower one will probably lose about 20 horsepower in the mid-range. Um, of course, if you get the VVTi, then you get your mid-range and your peak. So that'll be wonderful. Um, right now, essentially what we've got is, uh, I've got $800 wrapped up in what you're seeing in here. I've got $600 in the motor and $200 in the cam. And I, I have the other parts we're gonna need, but if you look on eBay, you can get the cam carrier for dual VVTi, including cams for about 150 bucks. And the valve cover is about another 50. So if you go for the dual VVTi, then you'd be in for an even thousand. Um, you might have little odds and ends like the solenoid and whatnot. Now, without modifying the camshafts themselves, you are going to have to run an aftermarket ECU. But thankfully, because the timing is right on the end of the camshaft, this should actually be possible to just clock this. There's no power going through that end of it. It should be possible to clock it and make the stock ECU happy and just run these on the uh, 2ARFE ECU. So, yeah, I'm pretty excited. Um, what we did before gave us uh, 270 crank horsepower. And the math shows that this should be probably 290, maybe 280. We'll see. Uh, but the uh, 12 and a half to one compression ratio from this motor is going to go a long way towards making up for the 200 cc's that is missing. So, all right. Uh, next video about this, I think, is going to be, uh, yeah, it's going to be figuring out the exhaust VVTi situation, putting it back together. Have a good one, guys. We'll see you later. Don't worry, Maggie. I'm not leaving you in here. <laughs>